Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you on Tuesday, the day after the second round of fixtures from the Premier League came to a close, with Liverpool drawing 1-1 at home to Palace at Anfield last night. Arsenal four points ahead, Liverpool after two games of the season. Who would have thought that? Eh? Uh, nice and easy. End the, table, end the season now, shall we? Cause we'll, we'll take second place. Um, so yeah, second second week out of the way. Now all guns blazing, heading towards next weekend. Arsenal heading to Bournemouth on Saturday evening, 5.30. All preparations beginning for that at London. Colney today, I'll be heading there on Friday for Mikel Arteta's press conference. I think that, yeah, no, it has been now confirmed 10 a.m. Uh, Mikel Arteta's press conference on Friday morning so keep your eyes out for that looking forward to getting back to Colney for a press conference for the first time this season looking forward to getting to Bournemouth on Saturday for my first match of the season as well although I'm not going to be leaving until pretty late so I reckon I'm going to get there pretty much bang on kickoff uh, so don't be expecting my usual stuff before the match in terms of the live broadcast during the warm-ups etc that I have to wait till the following weekend but I am determined to make it there for the game on Saturday looking forward to that one hopefully for Arsenal to make it three wins in a row what a sort of contrast that will be to this time last season when we all know what happened after those first three games to where Arsenal found themselves so it'd be very nice if they could um make it nine points from nine on Saturday against Bournemouth side. He got a bit of a hammering at Man City at the weekend, but let's face it, most people get hammering at Manchester City, so I don't think we can read too much into that. Uh, from training today, we've seen the cameras there um, at London Colney today. A few clips doing around on Sky Sports broadcast media. We're invited in to do a bit of filming at... Um, at training and didn't couldn't spot in the videos Fabio Vieira that's not to say he wasn't there that was just in the videos obviously uh, but everyone else looked available and I think it's gonna be really interesting looking at Mikel Arteta's team selection for that game on Saturday he's got for the first time this season he's got some really big decisions to make or two two really but that then brings other positions into play and basically it all depends on the fullback so far this season we know what Arsenal have done they haven't had uh, everyone fully fit and available or they felt that in a way they're two what you'd probably consider first choice fullbacks in terms of Tommy Asu and Zinchenko. Tierney has come on, uh, sorry, and Tierney. Tierney has come on as a substitute in both the opening games but you would look at that this now after two full weeks of training for those two that this is the first game that they're probably really going to be considered as 100% match fit and available to play. So what does Mikel do? Ben White has filled in very well at right back, in my opinion. I saw he got some grief after the Palace game, and I don't understand. I mean, I know Ben White kind of divides opinion a little bit, and people seem to have their, I don't want to say agenda on him, but it's like, I don't know what else he can do, really. I mean, you look at what Wilfred Zaha did against Liverpool last night. You know, Ben White playing out of position against Zaha on that Friday night under the lights at Palace. I thought he did so well. He kept Zaha really well under wraps. You sort of look at his stats after the game and they're impressive. Yes, he gave the ball away a couple of times early on, but apart from that, and I only saw bits and pieces of the game. Like I said yesterday, I was watching most of the second half over a WhatsApp video call, my dad holding his phone in front of the TV. But every time Ben White, he seemed to, he, you know, him and Saliba joined up really well on Zaha and did a really good job on him. And that is no mean feat against someone like Zaha, who, you know, experienced fullback struggle against, let alone a centre-back playing out of position. But having said all that, look, if Tommy Asu's fit, Tommy Asu plays at right back, in my opinion. You can't keep this whole keep a winning team, keep a winning team, just because they're winning. If you've got a, a proper right back and a top quality right back, which Tommy Asu is, if he's fit, for me, he plays a right back. So he comes into the team. And then that leaves you with a very big decision if you're Mikel Arteta in terms of what do you do with the centre-backs. He hasn't had to make that decision yet that's this season because Tommy Asu hasn't been fully fit and available. But if he's considered that on Saturday and he does come into the side, then what do you do at centre-back? Do you keep... Saliba and Gabriel who have obviously started the first two games together or do you take the decision to move Ben White into the centre-back position and then who do you leave out it's a really big one we know how well Saliba started the season obviously fantastic against Crystal Palace yes he scored the own goal on Saturday but you know it's an own goal that happens and he picked himself up really well from that uh, and responded well in the rest of that second half um so what do you do? Do you take Saliba out? Can you take Saliba out after the way he started the season? I'm not sure you can. What about Gabriel, who really is the kind of mainstay in that centre-back, in, in the defence, really? He seems to always play now. And 
he's a left-sided centre back as well. And when you kind of look at Saliba and Ben White, are they right-sided centre back? So it's it's going to be really interesting. But can you leave 50, your fifty million pounds sign in Ben White out, who played more minutes than anyone else last season? Who Mikel Arteta really really rates? Who he not just for his defensive capability, but his ability on the ball and his ability to bring the ball out from the back from splits the line. Now Arteta sees that as very very key to the way his sides play. So it's going to be really interesting to see what he does if. Tommy Asu starts at right back. Now, obviously, Ben White could still start at right back, and then that takes that decision out of play, certainly for now. It might roll on for the next game. At some point, though, that decision is going to have to be made, and it's going to be really interesting to see what it does, and it's going to certainly send a message out um, uh, for the rest of the season, especially when it comes to Saliba. If Saliba keeps his place, if one, you know, if White goes on the bench, or if White comes in and Gabriel loses his place, then that says an awful lot about the way Saliba will have impressed Mikel Arteta in these opening weeks of the season. And then you also have the left-back situation. For now, you know, Tierney's been working his way back to fitness. Arsenal being very, very careful with him. But, you know, he's played, he's come on as a sub in the two games. He's been continuing to train. He was, certainly by this weekend, you would consider he is 100% fit. So what happens there? Do you play him at left-back? And if you do, then what do you do with Zinchenko? Does he move into midfield? Do you potentially take Granit Xhaka out and play Zinchenko in that midfield role, which a lot of people sort of identified as potentially why he was being signed? But can you take Granit Xhaka out after the way he's started the season? So it's going to be really interesting. I think for the first time this season, it's... You know, Mikel's team selection, there's going to be lots of eyes on it when it's announced against Bournemouth. And uh, so far, he hasn't really had to make those calls because of the way things have worked out with injuries. But now he is going to have to. Let me know what you guys think when it comes to that. Anyway, you know, who do you think should start? If everyone's fit and available for this weekend's game against Bournemouth, who starts? Who plays at right back? Who plays at left back? Who plays at centre back? And if you do bring Kieran Tierney in, what do you do with Zinchenko then? Does he just drop to the bench or does he play in midfield? Some really interesting decisions for Mikel Arteta today and I can't wait to see what you guys have got to say on it as well. So please do leave your comments below telling me what you would like to see in that game on Saturday and look let's face it it's a nice position for Mikel Arteta to be in this is why Arsenal strengthened their squad during the summer it's why they went out and bought someone like Zinchenko who can play in different positions who can offer you different uh, possibilities in the starting 11 it's why Mik um, William Saliba was brought back from his loan he wasn't considered to be going out again because they wanted him they felt he was ready to make his mark he's certainly done that and that has absolutely improved the defensive options that Mikel has for this season so good decisions uh, for him to make difficult ones but good ones indeed so in terms of summer departures we saw another one yesterday i spoke on the video yesterday morning about how that uh, alex rudinson's move to turkey was bubbling away and was eventually going to happen at some point it was confirmed later on in the day he is headed out on loan to alena Spor. it's just a loan for the season so it's not a permanent deal. I mean, it needs to happen because, let's face it, Renison can't play for Arsenal. He's just not good enough to play for Arsenal. It was very clear from when he arrived. Um, and he needs to go out on loan. He spent last season out on loan. He needs to go out on loan again. Or he needs to actually find, go out on a permanent move. But that wasn't possible this summer. So they'll have to make a decision on him uh, next year. And again, as I said yesterday, departure is very much the kind of priority when it comes to the transfer market for Arsenal right now. They've done a lot. Certainly while I was away, they got some of those players out the door that they've been really looking to get out the door, like Torreira, Mary, that sort of thing. But there's still a couple of um, players that they need to sort out and they're trying to sort out Ainsley Maitland-Niles and Hector Bellerin obviously the two main ones we know Bellerin's situation we know he wants to go to Real Betis we know Betis want to bring him back it's just a case of can this deal be done and if it and you know Betis hoping to get him because of the wages issue and how much they might have to pay him they don't want to pay any transfer fee Arsenal obviously want at the moment a transfer fee because they're looking at it. he's still got a year left he's still only in his 20s and you know experienced player you can't just give Bellerin away but the position that Arsenal have done, have put themselves in with some of these deals that they've done, you can understand why other clubs are looking at it and thinking, well, if we just hold on, then maybe they might just terminate his contract and we'll end up getting him for free and that's going to help. So that's one that's going to continue to roll on. You know, Bellerin's absolutely pushing for it to be done. He's always maintained that he only wants to really go back to Betis this summer. I would say if the window if the window progresses, we get into the last few days and Betis doesn't materialise, then maybe something else will happen. But I don't know. It's you know, his focus has very much been on Betis. It has been the whole summer. He wants to go there. Betis want to get him back. I think personally at some point it will happen. I'd be surprised if it doesn't, but right now, you know, no deal is there to be done. But that's one of the priorities at Arsenal working on Ainsley Maitland Niles 
is another. It's pretty clear that he needs to go out. Both of those players only have a year left. And, you know, ideally for Arsenal, they would get those deal, they would get deals done for them this summer, move them on. And that generates more space in the squad. There's still the Nicolas Pepe situation that seems absolutely no closer to being resolved. You know, he was open to leave in Arsenal, well, hoping to get him to go. But it's just an incredibly difficult transfer to do. £72 million player. Obviously, he's not worth that. We know that. But that's how much Arsenal paid. He came in for £72 million. He got the wages of pretty much, you know, a player who's going to command that sort of transfer fee. Who's going to take those wages on? Not many clubs at all. Well, at the moment, it's proven no one at all. Um, you know, whether that changes as we get towards the end of the window... It might well do. And, you know, if that does happen, then it would be something Arsenal would be open to. But right now, it, it hasn't. I've always said that it feels like the most likely scenario for Nicolas Pepe, if he does indeed go out before the window, it will be a loan with potentially an obligation to buy or uh, some sort of clues to buy at the end of the summer. But it's just really difficult because of the money invested in, Arsenal invested in him, because of the, what wages they put him on, because of his position in the team now and his squad and his lack of playing times. Clubs just aren't going to be giving Arsenal the sort of money they want to make any sort of cash back when it comes to Nicolas Pepe and it's just um so we'll wait to see what happens exactly but you know what we now two weeks no I can't even remember how long it is until the window shuts it's about two weeks and it's just over and um Pepe's future is no no closer to being re resolved I mean he's still in the squad he was on the bench at the weekend but it's obvious we saw last season that Mikel Arteta doesn't really trust Nicolas Pepe that's not groundbreaking news we know it you just have to look at the amount of minutes Nicolas Pepe played the amount of starts he plays that's that's all you need to know when it comes to what Mikel Arteta feels about when it comes to Nicolas Pepe and you know if he stays then may, he might well still have an impact to make this season but I think it's pretty clear that Arsenal want to get him out would like to get him out they've targeted Rafinha earlier on in the transfer window so that again says all you need to know about exactly how much Arsenal want to improve on that side uh, of attack but Nicolas Pepe's future certainly dominates what they're going to do with that. In terms of incomings, I can't give you anything else at the moment because it's just nothing that I've heard. Nothing seems to be bubbling uh, away. I'm sure it is, you know, under the under the radar. You know, Arsenal, we, we know they're open to doing transfer business. Mikel Arteta has said it many times. He's not, he's, he's not keeping it a secret. They want to do more in the transfer window. They want to strengthen the squad. I'm sure they will be trying to do something before the end of the window. Um, it's just a case of... Um, trying to get something done and at the moment I've not heard of anything doesn't seem like anyone else has heard of anything so we'll wait and see how it all progresses on that front but you know it's not all about transfers is it Arsenal have got a good squad I really genuinely believe that I look at that squad right now I look at the young players who are ready to go up to another level and I think they've got a really decent squad there this season and yes another signing would be nice hopefully it does happen but if it doesn't happen I still think Arsenal have got enough to have a really good season this season um, it might take a couple of players really stepping up. It might take someone like Pepe if he does stay to really, you know, find some form if he is given opportunity in the Europa League to really push on and then start challenging the like of uh, Bukayo Saka and putting pressure on him for a Premier League place. But that's hopefully what is going to happen this season. So let's wait and see. Um, before I go, all or nothing. Um, I haven't really talked about it on these videos because it first came out just as I went away and, you know, I've watched it all. I've watched the last two episodes as well. I can't say anything about it until after 6pm tonight, which is Tuesday, because that's when the sort of media, early media screenings that we've had, we can then discuss what happens in the last two episodes. I'll be putting something out on goal, actually, which will go live at 6pm. So, um focusing on these last two episodes, they will contain kind of spoilers. So if you don't want to know anything about it, then don't read the piece that I'm going to publish today at 6pm. I won't give it all away, but it'll certainly talk about what you what you can expect to see in those final two episodes. Um, they are good. I think the whole series on a whole has been good. I think it's been pretty eye-opening. I thought the first episode was disappointing. Um, real lack of info, really, in that first episode. I really, I was one of the most things I was intrigued about the whole series was the build-up to that Brentford game on the first game of the season, exactly, you know, what it was like behind the scenes, how bad it was, you know, how Arsenal felt absolutely, you know, hammered by the Premier League and uh, in terms of not having that game called off against Brentford. And yet they glossed over it completely. There was no insight, no footage, nothing. I thought I was really disappointed in that first episode. But from then on, I thought it improved steadily as it went on. I thought some really good insights. 
into it. I enjoyed watching it as a fan. The second series, second episode I enjoyed because it was mainly the North London Derby win. That was obviously great to watch. And then I really, I thought it went on from that, it, from series, episodes three, four, five, six uh, and onwards. You've got some good things with the players. I like the bits with Nuno Tavares and Kieran Tierney in episode three. The Mikel Arteta team talks were really, really interesting. I thought some were good. I thought some, you know, it was impossible not to compare him to David Brent or um, Alan Partridge with some of them. You know, the pre-Leicester team talk, getting everyone to rub their hands together and imagine, you know, I think it's difficult though when you're a, you're trying to be inspirational and you're a leader and that sort of thing. I think you're always going to come across, there's going to be that comedic value if other people are watching it and watching over you. It's always going to be that sort of cringe factor almost with some of the stuff that they do each time to try and be different, to try and inspire the players or the, whoever they're leading. And, you know, I, I you know, the whole you'll never walk alone training ground stuff uh, with the speakers playing it. I can see the idea. Obviously, again, it's pretty cringy when you watch it on TV. And I remember we were speaking to um, Aaron Ramsdale and Granit Xhaka at Colney a couple of weeks ago ahead of the launch of the the final, th- no, the, the middle three episodes. And <laughs> Aaron Ramsdale said when we spoke about those speakers, he was like, yeah, I don't think he's going to be doing that again. And obviously it didn't work. Arsenal went lost 4-0 and it looks really bad, especially if you lose 4-0. But I could see what he was kind of trying to do. And the whole way through it, the team talks are, are, are just interesting. The drawings on the pictures again. So, yeah, I've enjoyed it as a as a whole, as a series. I think there's been some really good bits in it. And like I said, a few disappointing bits in terms of a lack of detail. The the build up to the North London derby being postponed in January again, it was just nothing. And I thought that was really disappointing because I wanted to see how that all you know came about and exactly what went on behind the scenes. So there's a few things that were missing, but on the whole, I thought it was a good series. And like I said, the final two episodes now are going to drop later this week. I'm going to put out something at six o'clock tonight. I'll talk about it a little bit more in tomorrow's video in terms of. Um, in terms of what you can expect to see in those last two episodes. Again, I'll flag it before I start talking about it. They will contain spoilers. So if you don't want to see it, if you want to be completely surprised by what happens in those final two episodes, then don't watch my video tomorrow and don't read what I'm putting out on Gold today at 6pm. But if you are interested, you want to get a little bit of a taste about what you can expect, then like I said, watch. Uh, go to my social media at 6pm later on today on Tuesday and I will be posting something with a few little bits and pieces about what is to come. Thank you very much for watching. Apologies, I've rambled on a little bit more. I'm up to about 17 and a half minutes now. So apologies for that. Hope you stayed with me throughout all of this. Anything you've agreed with, disagreed with, let me know as always in the comments below. Thank you for your support. Thank you for the warm welcome back you've all given me this week. And yeah, enjoy the start. Enjoy your Tuesday. Enjoy the rest of your week. And I'll speak to you very, very soon.